Good evening, good evening, amen. Welcome to another Wednesday night service. Here we are at Mount Olive Baptist Church, and we thank God for everyone who is here and you who are viewing online. We just are so grateful to God for all that he's done for us. He's still on the throne. He's still calling the shots. He still knows what he's doing, and we're just so grateful for that. So we're looking forward to just a great time of love, reading of the word, we're going to do some praying. We're going to hear the preached word. We're going to hear a special group this evening that's going to bring us the songs of him. And we're just so thankful for God this evening. Amen. Everything points to him and certainly through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So now this evening we're going to start off with a reading of the scripture. As you know, we are in the book of Judges. And tonight we're going to cover chapters 11 through 14. Now, that covers a couple of judges, but more prominently, it covers Jephthah, and it also covers the very beginning of Samson. So we start looking at Samson. People don't recognize it, but yep, Samson was one of the judges during that period of time. And I hope that you got an opportunity, either you were here or you heard Sunday as our pastor talked about the book of Judges. His sermon had to do with where there was no king in Israel and every man did what was right in his own eyes. And that's the period of time that we're in now in the book of Judges. So I hope and pray that you have your copy of the scriptures laying aside or you're going to just follow along with us on the monitors. But we are going to cover, Lord willing, chapters 11 through 14 of the book of Judges tonight. Chapter 11. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come, and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me, and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mispi. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from Arnon even unto Jabbok and unto Jordan, now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon, but when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent, and Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness, and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. 
And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast, but Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched in Jehaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coast of the Amorites, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, and from the wilderness even unto Jordan. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and shouldest thou possess it? Wilt not thou possess that which Chemos thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns, and in Aroer and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coasts of Arnon, three hundred years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearken not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead, and Manasseh, and passed over Mispi of Gilead, and from Mispi of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aroer, even till thou come to Minith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mispi unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Chapter 12. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon, and when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? 
Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me go over. That the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said, Nay. Then said they unto him, Say now Sheboleth. And he said, Sheboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan, and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had thirty sons and thirty daughters whom he sent abroad, and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Aijalon, in the country of Zebulon. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Pirathonite, judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews that rode on threescore and ten ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, died and was buried in Pirathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. Chapter 13. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine or strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh, my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send Come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran, and shewed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? The angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on, for it 
came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife than Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shewed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaor. Chapter 14. And Samson went down to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother, to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. He went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother. And shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Amen. That concludes our reading for this evening and from the book of Judges. Amen. Who knew Samson was a man of riddles, you know? Ah, my, my. That and a man of, with women and a lot of that got him, of course, into trouble. Amen. But God's word is true. It certainly is. Amen. 
And so we're so grateful for God's word because it is true. <clears throat> and Lord willing, next week we'll go to that section that, that everybody uh, probably heard about in Sunday school about uh, Samson and Delilah. Yeah, so we get to that section of it. And so, but it's God's uh, word and it's all true, but it's a strange time and a lot of strange things were going on during that t period of time. But no matter how, how strange the times are, God is still in control. He knows what he's doing. He still is sovereign, and he's working all things out for our good. Amen. So we thank God for the reading of the word, and we thank God for each one of you who are following along. And so now what we'd like to do is we'd like to turn our attention toward prayer. Um, and even though in our prayer we do have on our uh, a lot of people that have called in that are sick, shut in, and have different issues, different problems kind of going on. Uh, we ask you to please pray for our church family. Uh, there are those who, of course, who are going through bereavement, and a lot of them are out of town. We don't really have anything at the church, per se, as far as funerals go. But continue to lift your brothers and sisters and the Lord up, and uh, we'll continue to do that. And we know that God is still in control. Amen. Uh, so at this time, what we'll have is we've got three pre-recorded uh, prayers, and we'll let them come first, and then after that, depending on how much time we have, we'll have some prayers here from the congregation. So what we have queued up uh, here is we have, uh, first of all, Sister Sandra Pippins will pray, and then after her, uh, Deacon Herman Williams, and then that will be followed up by the Reverend Charles Powell. Um, so... If you will, pray along with these saints. Good evening, my love. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, I come to you asking you for forgiveness of my sins those I committed knowingly, and those I had no knowledge of. Lord, I ask that you would comfort the bereaved. I ask that you would heal the sick if it be thy will. I ask that you would give those who are caregivers strength. I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would bless us to be a blessing to others, that we would use our resources that you have blessed us with to help those in need. I pray, Lord, that you would bless our pastor, that you would keep him in your loving arms of protection, that you would continue to lead God and direct him. I pray for the administration of our church, those who have worked continuously to ensure that our services continue. Lord, I pray for our teaching ministries. They have grown. I pray that they continue to grow. Lord, I pray for our membership, that although we are scattered, that we should still remain united. Lord, I pray for our country. I pray for our leadership. I pray for those people who hold positions. But I pray that the believers will be the light that you have called them to be, to be the example for a cold, dark, dying world. Lord, I pray that you will grant this prayer in the desires of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Mount Olive and friends. My name is Herman Williams. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, first of all, just to thank you, God, for being God. And we want to give all praise and adoration to you, Lord. We want to come to you right now and just confess, Lord, that we have not done all those things that we should do. And we just ask you, please, Lord, forgive us. Lord, we come to you right now asking for your grace and mercy. We pray for Mount Olive Baptist Church, for our pastor. For those who are going through illness and bereavement, Lord, we just ask, Lord, to please bless them and comfort them, Lord. We ask, Lord, for healing, if it be your will, Lord. We pray, Lord, for this nation, for our government, Lord, that you just remind them that they're accountable to you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for families, Lord, that there be some harmony and peace in the families, Lord. We pray for, most of all, for those who are not saved, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to touch them, Lord. We ask you to remind us of your commandments, Lord that we, first of all, put no other God before us, and that we pray that we learn how to treat our neighbors, love our neighbors as ourselves, Lord. Lord, we pray just for peace and harmony in Mount Olive and bless the ministries, Lord, of this church, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who 
help make these services work, Lord, for those who do things behind the scenes, Lord. And we just pray most of all for the whole Mount Olive Church family, for those who are going through bereavement, Lord, give them that peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. For those who might be ill, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, for your healing touch, Lord. Lord, but most of all, we just want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for saving us, not because of us, but in spite of us. And again, we ask all these prayers in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, most gracious God, Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, praising and worshiping your name, your holy name. Father, we thank you first and foremost for the sacrifice that your son made on that old rugged cross on our behalf. Father, we know that love kept him hanging on that cross, Father, and that you watched, Father, as they beat and bruised and mutilated your son. But in the end, you knew why he was there. And he recognized without even saying a mumbling word that he was there to save our souls. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Father, we are so thankful for this midweek service. We know that we need a refresher. We need to be revived. We need to be renewed. So we're just so thankful for this service. We're so thankful for our pastor and his mandate and his edict that we continue to pray as a church. Father, we just know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much, Father. And we're so happy that he has decided and thought it was not robbery that he would allow us to pray on this Wednesday night. So, Father, we ask blessings for he, his family, his wife. We ask you to bless his entire family, his children, all that is his. We thank you for all of his efforts during these COVID times. He has been the rock that we've been able to stand behind, Father. We're just so grateful that he listens to you, Father. He doesn't react when people speak. He only reacts when you speak. So we thank you for he and all of his contributions to this church during this COVID time. Just continue to bless him, hide him behind the cross. Help him to be the man of God you called him to be. Bless him and keep him, Father. Then, Father, we uh, are nothing without you. The Bible tells us clearly we are nothing without you. So continue to accept our worship as a sweet-smelling Savior in your nostrils, Father. Help us be the men and women that you have called us to be. Not, not by saying things, but by doing things, Father. Father, we don't work for salvation. Father, once we're saved, we are then encountered and expected to, to work. So, Father, help us be a blessing to other people. Help us to be generous to other people. Help us to do the things that you have called us to do. Father, we know that there are sick and bereaved families among us. And, Father, we know that as much as we love to comfort, as much as you've given us to comfort, you are the ultimate comforter. So, Father, we ask you now that you would comfort these families, that you would be with these bereaved families in their midnight hour, that you would allow them to trust you and lean on you and give you all those things. Put it in your hands, Father, and take the burden off themselves. Because you say that you bear our burdens, Father. And we just are thankful that you bear our burdens, Father. Sometimes we get bogged down, Father, because life sometimes does that to us. But, Father, because we have you and we have trust in you, we know that you are bigger than any situation that we might find ourselves in. So, Father, we're just so thankful. Now we want to confess our sins, Father. We have all sinned and come short of the glory. Now we're asking you to clean us, to wash us clean, as David said in Psalm 51. Wash us clean, Father. Renew a right spirit within us. Help us to be who you've called us to be. Father, bless our church. Bless all of our auxiliaries. Bless, Father, our regathering efforts, Father. Just continue to keep us safe and help us, Father, during these times. Bless us, Father, and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank Reverend Powell. We thank Deacon Williams and Sister Pippins for those prayers. Amen. We're so grateful to God. Amen. I think uh, we've got just a few more minutes. Let's see if we, if we have anyone in the congregation that would like to come up um, and pray. Uh, is, that, is that Brother Adams coming up? Amen. 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 So we'll have a prayer from the congregation. We're so thankful that you are here this evening, and we're so grateful to God. Amen. For all of what he has done. 
Amen. We are still in prayer, praying for each other. Amen. God bless you, Brother Adams. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord, first I just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. Then, Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I've fallen short once again, but you continue to <clears throat> forgive me, and I thank you. Then, Lord, I pray for this church, this Mount Olive Baptist Church, this church family. I pray for Pastor Thompson and his family. Lord, I ask that you continue to, to watch over them and keep them safe and to heal whatever ailments may be in their body. Then, Lord, I ask you to continue to give them wisdom and continue to lead him as we follow him. Then I pray for all these preachers and their families and preachers all around the world. I pray and ask that you continue to lead them as well. Then, Lord, I, I pray for our kids. Uh, school is about to start and Father, I pray and ask that you wrap your arms around them and protect them from all the ugliness in this world. Then I pray for, pray for the teachers. Father, so much is asked of them and so little is given. I, I pray and ask that you be with them and, and give them strength and, and, and give them courage to, to keep on keeping on. Then Lord, I pray, for, I pray for this country. I pray for this world. I pray for all our elected officials. I pray and ask that they would come together and work together and try to solve some of the issues of this world. Then I pray for this economy. Father, everything going up but our incomes. I pray and ask that you touch this situation among others and turn them around. Then I pray for the hungry and the homeless. I pray and ask that you supply food to the hungry and shelter to the homeless. Then I pray for the sick, the bereaved, and the shut-in. Father, I pray next that you heal the sick, mind and body, because we know you are the only healer. Then I pray for those that have lost loved ones and bereaving, and I, I pray next that you comfort them, Lord. You are the God of all comfort. And then for those that shut in, I pray next that you be with them, because, Father, you're also a company keeper. And then, Lord, I, I, I pray for, I, I pray and thank you for Reverend Page, for his faithfulness on Wednesday night, and, and, and Brother Ricky Moore, and then all the choir members that come out to sing, and then audio and video. Father, I really don't like name dropping because you always tend to leave somebody out. So I just pray for everybody that has a part in making this Wednesday service happen. And then, Lord, as always, I pray for my family, and I thank you for my family. Lord, you've been so faithful to us. I just thank you for your faithfulness. And then I pray for the preacher tonight. I pray and ask that you fill him up so he can share with us what you have laid on his heart. And then I ask that, you, that we open our ears and our minds and our hearts and, and receive it. And then, Lord, I pray for everybody here and their families. And I pray for safe travels back to our homes. Lord, I ask you to hear my prayer. I pray and I ask these things in Jesus' name. The name above all names. The name that reigns over all things. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Amen. So grateful to God. Amen. For all of what he's done. What a blessing it is. Amen. We can pray for each other. Like we always say, that's the very least we can do for each other. Amen. Let's continue to pray for each other. Amen. We do have a preacher in the house this evening. And our preacher for this evening, his name is the Reverend Patrick Taylor. Let's thank God for him. Amen. 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 He's one of the ministers here at the church. He's been preaching for some time. He also is a great teacher, too. And I'm going to put in a plug for him because he's one of our teachers at the Mount Olive Bible Institute, which, by the way, starts in two more weeks. So we're asking. He's, one of the classes that he is teaching is Old Testament survey. So why don't you just call up to the church or go online and 
sign up for a class. And sign up for Old Testament service. That's a good class. That would be a good one. And while you're there, go ahead and pick a couple of others to sign up for too. Amen. Might as well go ahead and do that too. Amen. But we're just excited. We're going to hear from this preacher. Please pray for this preacher because he can preach. And we just thank God that God will use him. Give us ears to hear. So when we have heard God's word, we will not just say it was great, but we'll obey it. Amen. What a great blessing. Now at this time, we're going to turn you over to our music ministry. We have a treat for you this evening. Amen. We have two songs are coming up. And then after that, please pray for the preacher.
whenever I'm alone and whenever I'm thinking about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. You know, this little song, it rains in my heart. Listen.
It's all right if we praise him. When you consider where you've been and where you are, that you've been in perilous situations when you could not save yourself and you couldn't keep yourself. But the Lord, strong and mighty, took his hand and put his hand upon your life. It's all right if you please. Mount Olive, family. We don't uh, use that word loosely, but with sincerity. Family. At the end of your days, when you ain't got nothing else, you got family. Good evening. If you will, join me for a word of prayer. Sovereign God, majestic creator, righteous and holy in all of your ways. Indeed, you are the king of the universe. You made it, and it is yours. We are your sons and your daughters. We call you our father. Forgive us of our sins. We ask now that your Holy Spirit would be made manifest in this sanctuary. That your word would be heard. Your spirit would be felt. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the power unto salvation might be preached to save someone who is lost, to encourage and to edify the saints. Decrease me and increase you. Father, have your way. I ask you now in Jesus' name and I thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. Family. The wife is here. I ask her to stand. Her mother is here. Father-in-law is in the back. Doc Thompson, giving honor to the Holy Spirit, giving honor to God, our Father, who is our creator, Jesus Christ, who is the Savior, the Holy Spirit that comforts, that leads, and that guides. See you shaking your fan. It's hot. It's hot. Calamities. Catastrophes. The world is on fire. It's hot. And we pray for rain, that it might saturate the earth. We pray for a word from God that it might saturate our spirit. We thank you for the rain, the R-A-I-N, that falls. But we thank you, O oh sovereign God, that you reign. And that you rule and that you super rule. Your word is the first word and your word is the last word. Ain't nobody else but God. Ain't nobody else but God. Doc Thompson, I need to dig off into your message from Sunday, just a little bit. The judges said there was no king and man did what was right in his own eyes, there is a way that seems right unto man, and those ways lead unto death. Looking for a king, realizing we already got a king. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to 1 Samuel. I'm digging your message just a little bit. 1 Samuel 13. Beginning at verse 8. 
Scripture reads, And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. This is Saul. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore I said, I, the Philistines, will come down upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. For the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. The Lord has commanded him to be the captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. For a title. The perilous cost of impatience. We will look at three points. I won't hold you long. We will consider the appearance. We will look at the actions. Those actions based upon the choices that you make. And then we will consider, lastly, the consequences. The cost. The appearance. The opening of this chapter in chapter 13, we see Saul is already a king. And he's said to be 30 years old. The appearance. When we first meet Saul, we're back in chapter 9. He is on a mission from his father to go look for the donkeys. And he is described as being tall and handsome. Head above everyone else. When you look at Saul, he's easy to pick out. His appearance, see him. There's a thing, however, about appearances. What it looked like, what it is, might be two different things. What it looks like. You have the appearance. You can play the role. But can you play the part? See, appearance, what does it look like? And Saul is on a mission to go find what was lost. So he's looking, and while he is looking, unbeknownst to him, God is having a conversation with Samuel, and he says, Behold, the one that I told you about, you will see him. See, there is one thing, there's the appearance, but then there's another thing where there is an appearance. Okay? So Saul shows up on the scene in front of Samuel and he's looking and he says, do you know where the seer is? And the seer says, I am he. He said, well, won't you come with me? And before you go, I'll tell you about all the other things. I'll tell you about the donkeys, but won't you come sit down and eat with me? This time is appointed for you. There's an appearance. Brothers and sisters, I need to let y'all know something, that there is a time appointed for you and a time and appointed for me that the will of God for our lives needs to be done. Yes, there is a time, there is a place that needs an appearance. 
and what he says to him. At the end of 1 Samuel chapter 9 and 27, he tells his servant, he says, let your servant pass. And then stand thou still and I will show you the will of God. Stand still. Your appearance. It's one thing. This is an appearance. This is the first part. It's a very important part. Okay. The other part of the appearance is you look at, but can you really feel the role? So Saul looks like he's got all the He's got all the tools, but what we come to find out through his actions is that he is immature, he is inexperienced, and he is ignorant. You're inexperienced. You don't know what to do. So when you get into situations that you've never experienced before, your immaturity manifests itself. You don't know what to do. So to you, my elders, this is what Samuel told Saul, a young man who's been anointed king for a purpose to go out and fight the battles against the Philistines. You got one reason and one purpose, Saul. I am going to tell you and show you what to do at the appointed time. Here's what you need to do. So now I've told you to stand still and I've told you the next thing I need you to do is I need you to wait. Stand still and wait. So over in chapter 10, he, after he told him, he said, listen, I want you to stay here, Gilgal, and then after seven days, I will come and I will make burnt offerings and I will make the peace offerings. This is the prophet this is, a, this is a prophet, and he is telling the young man who is king what he is going to do. All I need you to do is two things. I need you to stand, and I need you to wait. Okay? This brings us to our text, and I won't hold you long. Here's what he says. So in chapter 13, what we find is that he has been king for just about a year. He's 30 years old. And he's got 3,000 men with him, and he splits that. 2,000 with him, the other 1,000 he gives to his son. And the Philistine have a garrison, and the son, Jonathan, attacks the garrison. And the Philistines don't like that. They say, you hit us, we hit you back. Had a few of y'all, we're going to bring everybody now. So what shows up is they've got about 6,000. And he looked around, and he said, uh oh, need some help. And what happens when you are in a situation that's more than what you can handle? What begins to appear is your character shows up. And so here is Saul, king for a year, inexperienced, immature ignorant and what does he do he panics the word of God that came to him from the prophet Samuel told him wait if you don't know what to do when you're in a situation and it's more than what you can handle stand still and wait don't get yourself into more trouble than what you're already in. Samuel, there's more men that's coming. Everybody that's with me done left. So my resources are gone. And the help that said he was on the way Is late. Don't y'all hate it when somebody tell you that they on their way and they ain't showed up and your anxiety that's already here then went up to here and you start to panic. You don't know what to do. Stand still. 
wait. We hear this from this pulpit. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Stand still. Wait. Be still and know that I am God. But when you're stressed out and you panicking, you forget what you've heard and then you do something else. So we've looked at the appearance. We've looked at the actions that reveal your character. And here is where Saul, young king, immature, ignorant, inexperienced, did the fool. Y'all remember Sanford and Son when Lamont did something and Fred used to, what did he say? You big dummy. There it is. Saul, he told you to do two things when you don't know what else to do. Do the two things. Stand still and wait. He panicked. He got scared. Bring me the offerings. I can't go fight against the Philistines without having all. Bring me the offerings. So he burnt the offerings. And he's doing what he's not. He doesn't have the authority to do it. Two reasons why. You're not of the tribe of the Levites. Okay, he's of the tribe of Benjamin. Secondly, you're not a priest. You can't. You're not supposed to. When you panic, you take actions against what you've been told to do. You know what that's called, right? It's disobedience. I told you what to do. Stand still and wait. And as soon as he finished, who he was waiting on showed up. Samuel. And then he tried to play it cool and run down there. It's like, oh, it's so good to see you. It's so good. What have you done? Uh, 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 uh. Well, I was worried. See, what had happened was. <laughs> listen to what he says in the scripture. He says, I forced myself. You went against something that you know you should not have done. You pushed yourself when you should have done the two things that I told you to do earlier in the previous chapter. Stand still and wait. This is a problem that we have when there's so much calamity in the world and everything is on fire and you don't know what's going on out there in the world, in our government, sometimes in our own home, and there's so much, there's so much... I don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. Over in Philippians, it says rejoice and pray. Supplication, thanksgiving. Why are you waiting? Why are you still? Talk to God. Prayer works. Prayer works. When I ain't got nobody else to talk to and can't nobody else help me. And it's hot. And I'm about to panic. And I'm not sure of the next step because this next step could be the last step. Father, I need to talk to you. Eternal God that never sleeps and that never slumbers. It's me again. Will you hear my cry? I'm standing still and I'm waiting to get guidance and directions. Keep your hand upon me and lead me and direct me. So I'll be like Jabez so that I don't pain myself. 
Saul, what have you done? We look at your appearance. You looked apart, but you can't feel the rope. Your actions have consequences. What did he tell him? For now, you had it all, man. It was right here. He was prepared to give it to you, the whole kingdom of Israel. Not anymore. He went from up here to down here. He wasn't even king that long. For God has found another after his own heart. Here's a problem is that the people ask for a king to lead them and guide them in battle. But I know another king, 30 years old, down to the Jordan, baptized, came up out the water, spirit descended on him. I know another king, walked on water, fed the hungry. I know another king, to a young man who was blind and couldn't see, and he opened his eyes and he showed him things, and I know another king. To a woman dealing with an issue of blood for 12 years, touched the hem of his garment, said, I felt virtue grow through me. I know another king. I know another king. Took bread and blessed it and broke it. Took fish and blessed it and broke it. And then he blessed it and he broke it and then he blessed it and he broke it and then he blessed it and he broke it. And at his appearance, everybody was full. I know another king that told Lazarus when he's when he's at the grave. I know another king when he told his sister, he said, I know your brother is dead. He said, but I'm the resurrection. Do you believe it? He said, I know he'll show up at the, at the resurrection. No, baby. I am the resurrection. And I know another king that can take a dead thing and stand out to it and he say, Father, I thank you. Look at that. That's that prayer. That's that prayer. That's the king talking to the king. And he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. But I don't say it for me. I say it for them. So that they might know that you sent me. Lazarus, come forth. Don't you know? Don't you know? He can talk to a dead situation and give it back life. Here's what I need you to do. Stand still. And wait. Samuel, you had it all. And the worst of it all, the worst of it all, not only did he lose the kingdom, but God took his spirit from him. Father, whatever you do, take his spirit away. Father, there is a young man that is wrestling. Look, he's 30 years old. To the young men, to my daughters, to my sisters, you are one step away of making a decision that will ruin the rest of your life. Before you make that decision, I pray that you're watching this online, and if you ain't watching it now, watch the replay. You're one decision. Stand still and wait. The Spirit of God, what he's told you before, he will bring back to remembrance, to lead you and guide you. All you have to do is trust him. Ultimately, that is what Saul's problem was. He didn't trust God. You have to take God at his word.
believe him to be real, and he is, that he sent his son to die for you and to die for me. Because we can't save ourselves. Your money can't save you. The big looks can't save you. You, you can be tall as you want to be. Doc Thompson, I know we got a problem with it because me and you both short. Your looks can't save you. I used to have her. I'm getting older. It's gone. Your money can't save you. Your looks can't save you. Nothing of this world can save you. But the one who created the heavens and the earth has always already made a way for your salvation. In the fullness of time, he sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Thank you. Brother, what was the song that you sang? Thank you. Thank you. If you and I can't say anything else, we ought to be able to say thank you. Look at the appearance. It's not always what it appears to be. Watch people's behavior and their actions when they're in tight situations. Who they really are will show up. It will appear. Pay attention to the choices and the decisions that you make. They have consequences. Some of them can be grave and some of them can be perilous. And when you are impatient, when you are impatient, it'll cost you. It'll cost you. It says, wait on the Lord. And here's the thing about waiting on the Lord. When you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. He loves you. He sent his only begotten son to demonstrate that he loves you. Because even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. But he's the eternal king. Because even though he died on Friday, Early Sunday morning. What we say? Early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. He is a king with all authority. And he rules and he super rules both now and eternity. So now, what will you do with the time afforded to you? When he appears and he's demonstrated his character and his life and his death and his burial and resurrection was costly for your salvation. Will you accept it? Or will you reject it? It is my hope. It is my prayer. Young man, young woman, whomever you are, wherever you are. That when the Spirit of God speaks to you, harden not your heart and accept Christ as your Savior. Because you can't save yourself. And if you don't make that decision here, that other place you're going to, it's going to really be hot. Thank Reverend Taylor for that great word. Amen. And patience will get you all the time, you know. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we are all lost and we can't do anything to save ourselves. And God has told us, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's what he says about salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But just like Reverend Taylor said, we're like Saul. We're impatient. We want to make up our own way of salvation. 
For at the heart of the matter, that was what was really wrong with Saul. He didn't trust God. God has already provided salvation in Jesus Christ. He took our sins on himself on that cross. He died for our sins and he rose for our justification. And God said, trust him, believe in him. That's the way of salvation. But we don't trust him. We try our own self. We'll say, I'll make my own way. I'll be a good person. I'll give enough money. I'll try to do a lot of things to appease God. For by grace, through faith, you're saved, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you've got to trust God. You've got to come to God the way he wants you to come, or you come no way at all. But salvation is real, and salvation is open. And so we're extending an invitation for anyone who would like to give their life to Christ, to trust him, believe in him. We ask you to do it and do it now. There's a number that's on the screen or anyone in the congregation that would like to come and say, I trust Jesus. I'm through trusting in myself. Also, if you need membership or you just need prayer, you can call that number. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been better to me than I've been to myself and I. Thank you. Baby! 
just going to take a few more moments to think about Reverend Taylor's message about how God rejected Saul because Saul didn't trust God. And God will reject us when we don't trust his way of salvation through Jesus Christ. I hear Jesus turning it around and him saying it positive. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Jesus' arms are open wide. He's already paid the price. Don't reject him. Trust him. Put your faith in him. Say, I know I am a sinner, but I need a Savior, and Christ is that Savior. It's the only way God will accept you. It's not God's intention to, that anyone would be lost, but he wants all to come to repentance and come to him. And the only way you can do that is through Jesus Christ. So I will never veer from giving the good news of Jesus Christ because salvation comes no other way. Trust him, believe in him. His finished work at Calvary's cross. His precious blood shed for our sins. Reverend Taylor said it right. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What great love. Will you call the number or will you come? Will you do it now? Harden not your heart when you hear the word of God. You must respond. You must respond. Trust him. Believe him. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, thank you again for this word that we have heard. Thank you for using Reverend Taylor. And thank you for using the message about Saul and his impatience and Father we know that you want us to always be obedient to you. Let that word marinate in our hearts as everything that we do so that we be obedient to only to you. Thank you for Reverend Taylor. Give him many more years to preach, teach, live your word Father. Thank you you've given him a heart a heart for people and where they are and what they're doing. So we're so grateful that all that you've done for us. And if someone here that doesn't know you and didn't walk, Father, don't let them rest until they give their life to Jesus Christ. And now as we're about to receive our offering, we're so thankful for all that you have given to us. May it be used what we give back to you for the building of your kingdom. If someone's here that wants to give and has a desire to but doesn't have, Father, we ask you to bless them also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. It is time now. We're going to ask our officers to come. It's time for giving. Uh, as you see up on the screen, there are normal ways of giving. Uh, and in addition to those ways of giving, we are also taking up for school supplies. So I've been informed there is a place online that you can click. You can click on special, uh, special offering, and there's a place there for school supplies. So in addition to your offering, we ask you to do that. And those here in the congregation, if you'll put into the middle section and also put for school supplies, as you know, the, this, the, church, the, uh, the schools are getting ready be, to begin. So we ask you to please help out families of the church and the, key, and the students as they get ready to go back. So please do that in addition to your normal offering. Amen. This time now we'll turn it over to Pastor Thompson. Let's all say amen. amen. Let's give Reverend Page a great hand. He does such a great job each Wednesday. Amen. And then let's give Reverend Taylor, Patrick Taylor, a great job. Amen. God bless. Well, we want to thank you so much for your attendance tonight. I think this crowd is, you need to quench the rumors we have in church on Wednesday night. That's not a rumor. That's the truth. Let's give ourselves a hand for allowing God share so deeply here with us. Well, we're going back. We're going to have an offering. We're going to ask if you stand from the rear and come two by two uh, as we share in our offering.
Now we, we cannot leave without giving the male course a wonderful hand of appreciation for sharing with us tonight. Amen. Thank God for all of you. Let us stand and have our benediction. us how to wait and be still. Never to try to get in front of you, but always stay behind you, that we might be people after your own heart. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all. Let us all sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, God keep you in my prayer. Amen.